nation to bring this last Bible to this sanctuary where it's going to be safe, and you have an antagonist who's trying to get it to use it and manipulate the minds of power, uh, minds of people to gain more power. That's a simplistic thing. And the, the, the twist is that the carrier of the Bible is blind. And the, the antagonized, antagonist does get a hold of it and leaves the uh, protagonist dead. Well, I killed you. I got the, he's clutching it. I finally have it. He gets home, he breaks the lock, and looks, and it's all in braille. It's all in braille. And he can't read it. And he can't use it. And there's chaos all around him, and his kingdom is falling apart. So, uh, well, that's it. Story's over. Uh, everybody loses. Not so because the protagonist has the Bible. But he has memorized it there. And so uh, he has suffered grievous wounds, and before he dies, he translates the entire Bible to the person he writes it down. Now, <clears throat> why do I say all this? At the end, this is what I don't care, so if you haven't seen it, cover your eyes once again. At the end, he has to pull back. This, this man has literally memorized the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation. Even Leviticus, with all the begotten, and all those difficult names, he's memorized it, and the person has diligently recorded it, and then, of course, he passes away, but he accomplished his goal. What I did not like, about the whole movie. The premise was very interesting. <clears throat> so he has this, the last volume of the Bible, and he puts it in the same shelf as the book of the, the Egyptian book of the dead, the Quran, and all this. And so even in his mind, he has labeled Christianity with all these other books. And that is, I did that whole story to say that, no, Christianity is not like that. We are miles beside that a religious group. Again, they separated themselves. When you think of the major religions like Judaism, uh, Islam, uh, uh, Buddhism, and Hinduism. Now, there's, there's more isms in there. There's thousands of religions. But I want to hit the top four other than Christianity. And even, you know, you put uh, you know Catholicism in there as well. Now, all of the religion, this is why they put Christianity up there. Uh, and, 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 they, and they would put, you know, Catholicism with that, you know, everything under the same umbrella. They propose that humans' true essence is in their soul instead of their physical bodies. All of these religions. And, you know, Christians believe that, too, our true essence. Maybe you've heard Barry say this, and he says this a lot. Uh, your spiritual life is more real than your physical. Because once the physical goes, the spiritual will stay around for eternity. So, in essence, it's more real. And so, some of these other religions kind of, you know, think about the same thing. But just like our physical bodies, the soul has need, the soul has needs, or it will starve. The soul has needs. If you heard me say this little comment before, uh, pretend I didn't. Now, man goes into the doctor, and the doctor sees he, he's initiated, he's suffering, he's, he's hungry, and and. Basically, it looks like he's starving. And the doctor says, well, it, it looks like you don't eat. He says, yeah, yeah, I do. I, do. I, I eat on, on Sunday and maybe on Wednesday. And see, as Christians, some Christians, no, no one here, but some Christians actually only get their spiritual food during this time. And I'm going to be here, up here for the next, what, 25 minutes. So that's like a thimble of milk, of nourishment. And maybe they'll come for a snack on, on Wednesday. Maybe. You can't sustain yourself. And sometimes uh, people are so quick to leave that, that, that they spill a little thimble of milk trying to get to the car and park it up. So you go. So everybody needs, we need, we, we, we need the spiritual food. And each religion proposes to be a guidebook to that spiritual plane where they can get that spiritual food and it helps lead our starving souls you know, to that, to that bread of life. 
For instance, in Judaism, they teach that one can atone for your wrongs by changing your behavior, praying and doing good deeds. That's Judaism. They, the, the whole concept of heaven and hell is not, even today, it's, it's not in the forefront of their religions. Now, doing good now, being a good person now. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that worldly. You're going to see there's a lot wrong with that spiritually. Islam teaches that you can move towards a, a paradise by performing the five pillars. Now, if you want to know what the five pillars are, that's your homework. You can study that, and that's Islam. Hinduism uh, claims that if we store up enough good karma, because it's good and bad karma, we will reunite with Brahman. That's the, at the top. There's millions of gods. Brahman is that top god. That's the cow god. So we can, we, if you do that, because bad karma and, and all of this, and, and Buddhism says uh, you can enlighten and discipline yourself into nirvana by practicing the Eightfold Path. What is the Eightfold Path? Again, that's some homework you can do with that. So all of these, I also want you to picture uh, all these different religions. And it's interesting, all these world religions believe that there was a Jesus. All of them. All, some of them mentioned Jesus. What's the difference? They don't believe he's Messiah. Bottom line. They believe he existed, but they don't believe he's Messiah. So all of these, all of these different religions have a path, not only to spiritual food, but they have a path to whatever they consider to be heaven, nirvana, and all of that. And you gotta follow this, this path. <clears throat> and then this is where Christianity separates itself. You gotta do a lot of stuff to go up these different paths, whatever religion you so choose. And, and you got to do this eightfold this, you got to do this, you got to be a good person. And notice the similarity. The, the similarity is it all depends on you. You have to do all these things to obtain heaven, or their version of heaven, enlightenment, nirvana. So whatever path you choose, the similarity is it depends on you. Good works, good works, you got to do something. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this is what Christianity is different. Everybody is going up. It's not trying to get heaven. The person that dwells in heaven, this is Christianity, came down from the mountain to bring us up. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lonely in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Jesus said that. This is the separation. This is why we are not a sect of some bigger, wholly separated and different. Heaven came down to this lowly plain, took us by the hand to lead us up to heaven. Is that so? We don't have to do it all. We have to do something. Don't get me wrong, but it won't happen without Jesus Christ. You're not going to get to heaven without Jesus Christ. You cannot earn your way into heaven. Now understand this, a logical God, and we serve a logical God, an all-knowing God, he does not purposefully give conflicting information about himself. If he did, in the end, that, that will only result in confusion. And believe me, there's a lot of conflicts, not only with these different world religions, but even within. And you can say the same about, you know, there's a lot of confusion in Christianity. We're going to touch on that. But why would a, 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 a logical God give all these different paths and cause all this conflicts and confusion? God is not the author of confusion. And you cannot earn your way to heaven. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of your own doing is the gift of God, not of results of works so that one would boast. Romans 3, 23, all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. James 2, 10 Who, whoever keeps the whole law but fails at one point 
becomes guilty of all of it. Isaiah 59, and we familiar with this, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, nor his ear dull that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you that he does not hear. These scriptures negate any effort on our part to earn a place in heaven outside of Christ. We need Jesus Christ. This is the biggest difference. So this Christianity is not a sectarian religion. It's not part of some big global part in that you can pick and choose like a, like a menu of religions. I choose that. In the last day, Jesus is not going to, and God is not going to judge us based on our sincerity to one of these different groups. Are right, you a Buddhist? Let me get the Buddhist book and see if you've been faithful. Uh, if you if, if you are in Judaism, let me get that book. Let me get this book. And so he's going to judge you. No, it's not going to. We, we don't judge a God. Uh, we don't uh, serve a God. He's not the God of confusion. The scriptures negate any effort on our part to earn ourselves into heaven outside of God. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. You cannot and will not get to heaven without Christ. The, the, the standard to get to heaven, I've shared this before, is perfection. If you are perfect, there's no such thing as something more perfect than something else. Perfect is perfect. You can't get more perfect than perfect. And Jesus Christ was that person. Now, if, if, if man has a method to get to heaven, and understand, the standard is perfection. So you can't compare yourself to me or some other person and say, well, I'm not as bad as Brother Tony. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as bad as this person. And so to elevate yourself, and go, so I'm a good person. I'm better than. I am not the standard. Jesus is the standard by which we can get to heaven. Now, so, that being the case, if you think you're are as good as Jesus, you don't have anything to worry about. But we know that it's an impossibility. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. That's John 14 and 6. Young people, I saw that. That was a quiz. So I, I gave it to you. So I expect a piece of candy or something. I just gave you the answer. That was a little quiz. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father, but through me. Romans 6, 23, <clears throat> we all know these scriptures. I preach no new commandment to you. For the wages of sin and death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through who? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9, 22. And if I'm going uh, through these scriptures, I have a lot. I always like to use scriptures, um, but I also have a outline. So if anybody wants this outline, just let me know, and I will send it to you. Hebrews 9.22, indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Righteous blood. <clears throat> the, 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 uh, the lambs and the, <clears throat> and the sacrificial animals that we read about in the Old Testament, that was just temporary. That was temporary. They could not, could not, it was impossible to read Hebrews. They could not offer a path for forgiveness of sins. It was just a, a momentary atonement. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us, who is he? Jesus Christ. May bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Also, in this section, Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was pierced. Now, understand this. This is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is why we need Jesus Christ. He, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was. I could not have been pierced for my own transgressions. I could choose to do that, but it would not have gotten me into heaven. He, Jesus, was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him, who is him, Jesus, was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, not mine, not yours, 
we are healed. So, you see, no man can get to the Father but by Jesus Christ. You can't ignore that. He is the standard. And he said himself, no man can come to the Father but by me. You can't... You, that's why people say, you, you people are so narrow-minded. Well, Jesus was too. That was a very narrow-minded statement. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So that eliminates everything else. It eliminates everything else. I am. Now, in this realm of inclusion, in this realm of not wanting to be uh, uh, selfish, in this realm of not going, wanting to be a bigot and so forth, uh, there's a lot of people want to accommodate. Accommodate. I think I shared this, this, this stat with you. Uh, Pew Research, they do a lot of stuff in research in different you know, religions. They said, I think it's 65%, 65% of people who profess to be Christians believe that there is another way to heaven outside of Jesus Christ. 65%. But number one, that lets me know that just because you're Christian, Call yourself a Christian, doesn't make you one. You all know my joke. You know, I'm in the garage. I get two flashlights and I go boom, boom. Doesn't make me a car, does it? <laughs> so it does not. Hey, that dog has four legs. Well, let's call the dog's tail a leg. How many legs does it have? Wait, well, now he has five. No. Just because you call it doesn't make it. So that, that, that lets me know that, okay. People's idea of what Christianity, they want to be inclusive, and, and then they say, well, God is love, and so we got to put all these things into being because we don't want to hurt people's feelings, and we want to be inclusive and include all that because God is love and Jesus, and why would God just be so narrow and have other things, and they talk about people's culture, they're born here and there. All, this, all these things to accommodate error. But Jesus said, I am the way to truth and life. No man can come to the Father but through me. I have to go through Jesus Christ. I have to go through Jesus Christ. That is a must. Now, when you come to Christianity, oh, we got an alphabet soup, don't we? Even within the church of Christ, there's all kinds of divisions now. It used to be when you go to a different town, go on vacation, you know, I, I still do this. I look, okay, where's the, where's the Church of Christ? It's near maybe the hotel or whatever. In occasion, when I get there, I would call and say, is there a possible way I can get there? Um, you know, because I really don't want to, I, I don't want to be a pest, but, you know, if somebody called Brookfield and says, hey, I want to get there, I, on occasion, I've gone and picked them up and brought them because somebody wants to come to church. That's beautiful. Uh, travel should not Transportation should not be an error, but you can't do that anymore. You can't, unless you truly know. You gotta do some research. You gotta go on their webpage. What are they teaching? What are they? What is their practice? What are they? What are they doing? It's how oh, well, you church of Christ people. You're so you're so you know narrow minded. Now there are some core beliefs, and it says if you believe in these core beliefs, you're all good. Jesus is Lord and is divine. A lot of religions believe that. Believe in the Godhead. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the virgin birth, all of these are essentials. Salvation by faith in Christ. We believe that. And the Bible is the Word of God. So you say, okay, so you know, Church of Christ people, you, you gotta be careful, you ain't getting narrow-minded. Now you, you separated Christianity. And there's all different divisions in there, but there's divisions in here, it's alphabet soup. A lot of people call themselves Christians. Even Church of Christ, you call yourself that. Because you're under, you're in a building with the banner of Church of Christ, it's not a guarantee you want to get down. It's not. And people ask me that question, I simply say, people who do the will of the Father are going to get into heaven. That's important. Not the place where you go. Because there's all kinds of false teaching that's going on. Again, not here in Cherry Hill, and not in Brookfield. So we're good. Good to go. But here's the primary difference. And we're teaching this. We follow a pattern theology. There's a pattern. There's a blueprint. This is my, uh, this is my iPad, but my Bible is on here. So pretend this is a book. 
we follow a blueprint that we see. That's not being legalistic. I think I shared this with you before. It's not. It's not being legalistic. What it shows that we have a love of the Word of God, that we want to follow it according to what we read. Now, there's some sections where we have to uh, do some more study, line up in line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, but there are some basic understanding as far as it, especially when it comes to one's salvation, we can read that. There is no other, some people use that sort of as a jump off, okay? The Bible says this, and they jump off to different mindsets and thoughts. There's a pattern and blueprint in the Bible that guides us to do things that God will have us to do. Not only how to be saved, but how to worship him publicly, how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife, how to be a good child, how to be a good citizen, how to grow spiritually, how to develop uh, humility. There are patterns and ways that the Bible teaches us these things. And the Church of Christ is the only place that seeks to do that pattern or should seek to do. That's the separation right there. There's a blueprint. There's a pattern. And again, people want to be free of that. That's legalistic. No, that shows a love of the Word of God. We love the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 1. We're coming to a close. Starting at verse 10, it says, I appeal to you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree, <clears throat> that you that there be no divisions among you, that you be reunited in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrelings among you, my brethren. What I mean is that each one of you says, well, I follow Paul, I follow Paulus, I follow Cephas. Some were right when they said, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? The Bible makes Christians and Christians only. Let me say that again. The Bible makes Christians and Christians only. I want to be the, uh, as Brother Tony says the same thing, because as I look out in the world, all I see is people sowing hatred. There are no hyphenated Christians in Scripture. There are no hyphenated. Anything you put before your Christianity is greater than. I'm not a black Christian. Because see, Anything you put in front, Christian is the is the is the noun, right? The the, the adjective affects the noun in some way of force of pattern. School teachers, is that right? Pretend it's right. <laughs> you have an adjective, you have a noun. <clears throat> so, if six foot preacher, that'd be nice. I'm not six foot. So anything you put in front modifies the noun. So any hyphenated Christian, what makes you that way? Well, I'm a Lutheran Christian, I'm a Baptist Christian, I'm a Church of Christ Christian. So all these things that you put and you gotta, and whatever the world considers that adjective, you gotta constantly modify. I wouldn't do that. Matter of fact, when you go through scripture, when that was occurring, they nipped it in the bud very quickly because we're all one in Christ Jesus. The Bible makes Christians and Christians only. And how do you know you're that Christian? When you follow the pattern that is given. When you follow the pattern that is given. Ephesians 2, starting in verse 8, by grace you have been saved through faith and that is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, that no one can boast. Mm -hmm. So, the Bible does not make hyphenated Christians. It's interesting, and I'll say this. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm sharing the gospel 
there, there are three people, and every Monday we, we meet. Uh, it's, it's an interesting group, but they're willing to listen. There are two ladies who come from a Catholic background, and I, I've talked to others who have come from that background, and I've shared this story with you. There are two, uh, but they have questions. Anyone you meet that's questioning their religion, that is an excellent Bible student, let me tell you. If they're questioning, and they're looking for answers. <laughs> my, my daughter, who I mentioned, who has the little one at the house, uh, who, and I told her, you can, you can go anywhere, but you're gonna have to keep her here. So that's, I'm, that's my pride and, and joy. Until she grows up and gets on my nerves. She has to go too. I'm just kidding. She, she's met a fella, and, and I'm like, okay, uh, fine. He says, yeah, but he has questions. He wants to ask you some questions about the Bible. Ding, 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 ding. Bible study. Beautiful. And he's interested in my door. That is also a beautiful thing. When somebody has that mindset and they want to come and they want and they have questions. But going back to this group, she said, I have a question, I have a question, I have a question. I think I may have shared this with you. It says, Tony, when you say that if I do that, you know, the baptism thing, when you when I do that, what type of Christian am I? I say you're you're, you're a Christian according to scripture. She says, No, 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 you understand, you understand. So right now I'm a Catholic. I do what you say. And I'm trying to get her to realize. And I know what I say. You're doing what the word says. It's a work in progress. What type of, you know, what kind? And so all of her mind, in her mind, there's, you have to be some type of hyphenated Christian. You have to belong to something. I said, the Bible, you're just a Christian. That's it. And it's very difficult they are understanding, I think we're on our like, third Bible study. Now I see the lights are going off and I'm just pray, just pray. Um, uh, one, one's name is Tom, uh, one is uh, Stephanie, the other is Dora. Tom, Stephanie, and Dora. Send them up in prayers that their minds will be open. And he has a, he's all over the place as far as his belief system, but he is questioning. So I got three questioning people who are not following the pattern that you read in the Bible, but have questions. And how am I answering that? By the word of God. You know what I do? I said, here, read that. Read that. I feel, I think, I, I'm not saying that. I have them read it. I said, now, what does that say? What does that mean? And they are reading scriptures for the first time. It's how I got in the church and reading scriptures for the first time and they're doing the same thing. Now, we come to a close. As I said before, Christianity is not a secretary. We are set apart, set aside. Church of Christ is not an activist soup. You, can, you may want to plug it in there, but we follow the pattern. The pattern says for me to become a child of God, I have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this is the gospel. Understanding that I am a sinner and I have to have a faithful response to the call to come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy late. A faithful response to what must I do to be saved. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ I just read to you that without his shedding of blood, without his wounds, without his stripes, I am not healed. He did what I could not do. He did what no man could do, what you could not do, because he was a righteous person. He literally became sin on the cross. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So he shed his righteous blood, and he only had to do that one time. You can put me on that cross 500 times. It would not atone for my sins. Jesus' blood did. So how can I connect to that blood? That's the most important thing. According to the pattern that's in the Bible, I have to believe that Jesus Christ is the one. I have to believe. Jesus said, if you don't believe that I am he, you're going to die in your sins. 
I have to repent. So all the stuff that's in my mind, and it's very difficult. This is where the, the rubber meets the road. I have to put that out of my mind because uh, but it says in, in Luke 3, 13 and 15. So he says it twice. Except you repent, you're going to perish. He says it again. Except you repent, you're going to perish. You don't have to be a theologian to come to Christ. Just understand that you are a sinner. You need Christ. He confess his name, his holy, righteous name. And then uh, I put in the watery grave of baptism. And Satan has put a lot of confusion in that. Once you follow the pattern that's in Scripture, those who came to Christ, those who became Christians, both Jew and Gentile, were baptized. That is the faithful response to the gospel. I think it's 1 Thessalonians says that Jesus says, you know, he tells the Thessalonians to take heart. I'm going to come in flame and fire to give vengeance on them. Number one, that don't know God. And number two, that have not obeyed the gospel. So I have to obey the gospel. If you're here today, if you want to obey the gospel, you know, the prayers of the church, why don't you come now as we sing the song that has been so long.